Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is encouragement. Encouragement. Now today as we come to Acts chapter 9, probably one of the more famous passages in Acts, you see uh, at the beginning, you see uh, Paul on, or Saul, as he's known then, on the Damascus Road. And, and what a great uh, example of a radical 180 degree turnaround. Uh, right. Don't say 360 because that'd be facing the same direction. Right. So 180 degrees. He has gone. He, he was already working for God. Right. He was already had the belief in God, the education about God. But remember, he was going after Christians because he thought he was doing God's work and God got a hold of him. And man, what an example he ends up being for us all, all Christians. So. But as you go through, you can imagine that as Paul, and I'll keep saying that, as Saul, he he's later known as Paul, that as he's going through, you can imagine that a lot of the Christians to begin with were probably a little leery of, of being near him, thinking that, okay, this is just some ploy, it's some scheme, he's going to pretend to be a Christian, and then he's going to end up killing us all. Now, if you put this along with Galatians, you'll find out that by the time uh, Saul gets to Jerusalem, it had been about three years since his conversion. So if you look at that and then you look at the disciples are still or the apostles are still a little leery, it shows you just how, how much of an impact he had in the lives of the early church. Now, Verses 26 and 27 are all we're going to look at today, and we're going to look and see how uh, encouragement um, on behalf of another can really, really do a great deal of good. So, verses 26 and 27 of Acts chapter 9, Saul has arrived in Jerusalem, and the disciples are not having any of it, and notice what happens. So, you see, it helps I get on the right page. Uh, and when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So you look at Barnabas, whose name means son of encouragement, and he is doing just that. He says, look, Saul, you come on with me. I know these guys don't believe you, but I have seen the change in your life. I've either he had heard it, they'd had conversation themselves, or uh, maybe he had heard firsthand. I don't know. But just imagine, imagine if he had been out in the crowd at one point or been in Damascus or knew some people in Damascus and they had heard the great teachings of, of Saul there and heard that he was preaching boldly in the name of Jesus. And when we say boldly, it was boldly to the point that they were ready to kill him. Right. He was the one that was going after Christians. And now the, the other crowds are about ready to kill him because of the message he's preaching about Jesus. Not other Christians, but other religious folks are trying to kill him. Then as he even gets to later on in the passage uh, that we just read, he's he's teaching against the Hellenistic Jews. And and that's what he was. He was born outside of Jerusalem and, and had come in. He was born in Tarsus, um, you know, Saul of Tarsus. And so as he's born there and has come in, uh, you know, he was kind of along the same lines as they were, but yet now they're ready to kill him as well. So there's been a radical change in his life. But even that, the disciples there in Jerusalem, uh, they're not really too sure about that. So it's so important that we see Barnabas's attitude that he says, I know there's been a change. Almost to the point of, Saul, let me speak on your behalf. Guys, you know me. You can almost imagine him coming. Guys, you know me, and I believe you should take my word for this. This man, Saul, he has seen the risen Savior. That's how he's an apostle, to see the risen Savior, that Jesus appeared to him on that Damascus road. God told him that he had a specific path and a specific duty 
for him to do. And that was going to be taking the message to the Gentiles. He even says he's going to suffer for it. Even as he first calls Ananias to go. You know, Ananias is a little leery of going to Saul because he says, Lord, don't you know this is the guy that kills Christians? And the Lord says, hey, it's okay now. He's on our side. And so here's Barnabas saying, giving, I can imagine it gives Saul some encouragement to know that somebody does believe him. And it would also be an encouragement to the brethren to know, hey, we need to open our eyes a little bit. You, you think about these guys that are being used supernaturally by God. By the end of the chapter, Peter actually raises a woman from the dead. Right? The same things that they had seen Jesus do. Now the Holy Spirit was doing through them. But yet they were a little leery of accepting the fact that God could change the heart of someone like Saul. See, there are people in our lives today that we would probably be, if we're not if we're not careful, we would easily dismiss them and think they're too far gone for God to save them. Can you imagine if the if the people had said that and the disciples had said that about Saul? Look at what all we've been missing. Had they discouraged him enough to the point that he said, you know what? Nobody's going to believe me anyway. I'll just give it up. I think it is imperative that Barnabas steps in here to give that encouragement even to Saul. To say, no, these guys need to take you serious because I've seen the change in your life. See, we need to also have our eyes open that we don't write anybody off. Because what who we might be writing off might be the next Paul, might be the, the next Billy Graham. You, you, you fill, in the, fill in the blank there, what we could be missing out just by lacking a moment of encouragement. So today I'd ask you to do two things. One, I tell you, be thankful for those who have encouraged you. And if they have, reach out to them and tell them, hey, thank you for encouraging me in that moment when nobody else believed me. And if you haven't had an opportunity like that or haven't had a situation that came about like that, then I would ask you the second thing is I would ask you to seek out God's will. Seek out someone who you can be an encourager, uh, an encouragement to. That you can speak truth to them and through them. Encourage them in the word of God. Because you never know. It just might change their life and yours too. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.